Joining us tonight to talk about your health is Dr. Ivan Chua, a colon and rectal surgeon at the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Let's start with two trends here. So we have the overall decline for, for decades in the number of people dying of colon cancer. At the, at the same time, we have it affecting younger patients. Maybe let's start with the one that's easier to explain, which is the, the decline in deaths. Why has that happened? Sure, I think it's actually uh, access to better screening. Um, so colon cancer screening traditionally has always been at age 50. We'll lowered it to age 45, but we'll get back to that in a bit. But because detection has gotten so good with colon cancer screenings, we're actually detecting adenomas or precancer cells earlier. We are also detecting colon cancers earlier. Therefore, we can treat them more effectively with a greater survival rate. We'll talk about all the screening and the colonoscopies in a second, but with younger patients uh, coming down with this condition, is that something you've seen in your practice? Unfortunately, very much so. Uh, as a sort of a whole, we've noticed that younger and younger people, even before the age of 50, um, into the age of start, sort of starting at 45, we're starting to see them with advanced adenomas or advanced polyps, and even earlier colon cancers, even without a family history. Uh, we're not exactly sure why that's happening, but we have noticed that younger people are developing particularly rectal cancer earlier. What are the, the possibilities for that? I mean, is it what we eat? Is it the, the additives? You, you read a lot about uh, microplastics, um, the human biome, which is a whole other subject. What, what could be going on? Right, we're not exactly sure. It's really a conundrum. I think it's most likely a multifactorial issue, including uh, the way we eat, the way we exercise, um, maybe environmental issues. So some of the things that happen are you know, we have an epidemic of morbid obesity. And so obesity is associated with development of colon cancer, high processed foods, red meats, less vegetables, less exercise, all associated with, you know, development of colon cancer. And, and the thing that, that helped the general population lower its uh, mortality rate from colon cancer isn't really available to somebody in their 30s because nobody's telling them to to go get colonoscopies at that age. That's right, that's right. And that's why it's so important to tell people about the symptoms of colon cancer. So some of these symptoms of colon cancer can be very um, kind of sneaky, kind of subtle. So it can be things like a little blood in your stool, uh, a little bit of change in your bowel habits such that you're getting more constipated or you're having a total flip where you're having a lot more diarrhea. Um, a lot of feeling like you have to go to the bathroom but can't. Um, sometimes even the change in the caliber of your stool. Um, all of these things can be extremely subtle kind of signs of colon cancer. And a lot of young people kind of attribute this to, oh, maybe I just have, maybe I just ate something bad or maybe I you know, have a hemorrhoid or something like that. But if you don't check, you don't know. And if you don't know, sometimes you miss pretty important colon cancer. Risks. Let me uh, remind our viewers, if you have a question about colon cancer, colonoscopies, give us a call at the number on the screen, or you can send an email to livequestions at mpt.org. Doctor, you mentioned the, um, the screening age for colonoscopy was, was lowered to 45? That's correct. So it used to be for years and years and years, uh, age 50. But then because we've started seeing younger and younger people with advanced adenomas or colon cancer, we've actually lowered it for all comers to age 45 and can possibly even be younger than that with a patient who might have a family history of colon cancer or inflammatory bowel disease or uh, families with advanced adenomas. Uh, obviously, colonoscopies are, are life-saving, but they're not especially popular. No, that's right. What, what do you want people to know? I want people to know that uh, they're not that bad, really. I mean, the worst part about it is the bowel prep. You know, the night before, you're drinking a bunch of stuff. It's going to make you go on the potty all night. So, you know, with the advent of uh, iPads, you can just watch a show while you're doing your, your bowel prep. And the next day, it's like a light anesthesia sedation. It takes about 20, 30 minutes to do it. Um, we look at a nice clean colon of yours. If we see any polyps, we go ahead and take them out. Not every polyp or 
also known as like a growth inside of the colon, turns into cancer, but that's where cancers come from. So the idea is if you can take out those polyps at the time of colonoscopy, you can actually prevent them to, from turning into cancer in the future. Now, I watched a lot of college basketball this weekend, oh, yeah. and I saw multiple <laughs> ads for the, the home screening, Cologuard mm -hmm. or, or something like that. Absolutely. Pros and cons of that. Pro, pro, you do not have to do a bowel prep. Uh, you do not have to go under anesthesia. Uh, it is not a procedure, so it's a very safe screening. Um, Cologuard and tests like that look for abnormal DNA that's already been shed into your stool. So you go to the bathroom, you send it away to a special place, and they look to see if there's any abnormal DNA. What it can miss is it can miss those little polyps um, because they haven't turned into cancer yet. So left into place, they could potentially turn into cancer. With Cologuard, if you have a positive col Cologuard test or DNA stool test. I think I know the, what, what happens next. You need a colonoscopy. Right. Yeah. So in my opinion, any screening is better than no screening at all. Um, just remember with Cologuard, the only time you can use it is if you don't have any high risk. So no blood in your stool, no high risk family history, no inflammatory bowel disease. If you have any of those things, you're not really an appropriate candidate for Cologuard. And you have to do it every three years. Let's take a phone call, Richard in Montgomery County. Richard, thank you for calling, go ahead. Yes, I was wondering, do all intestinal polyps or, or stomach or rectal uh, polyps turn into cancer? And how long does that take for them to transfer? Good into question. Cancer? Thank you, sir. That's a great question, Richard. Thanks for calling in. Not every polyp turns into cancer, so you can have polyps that are what we call tubular adenomas or precancerous cells. Those have the potential of turning into cancer, but not everyone turns into it. We find that as polyps get bigger and bigger and bigger, they have a more potential of turning into a cancer. So the idea is if you can get them out when they're small and easy to get out with a scope, that can help prevent cancer in the future. Um, in terms of uh, stomach and uh, stomach or intestinal polyps, much the same. And they say that sort of overall, it can take a polyp on average seven years before it has the potential of turning into cancer. So that if you've ever had polyps on your colonoscopy before, they usually see every, you know, three to five years. Um, not, they don't let you get to that 10 year mark. I read something about a, uh, a new blood test in the, in the pipeline. How, where is that in the pipeline? It's pretty new. Uh, there was just an article in the New, new England Journal of Medicine about it. Um, it is also looking at DNA coming from a cancer cell, basically, that's floating in the bloodstream. One of the things is um, it's not FDA regulated yet. It's not FDA approved, and it's not covered by insurance yet. So. Is that something in the future? Absolutely. Is that something that we're all looking forward to? Absolutely. But right now, it's so new, and we're not exactly sure. If, if somebody is, uh, is found to have colon cancer, what does the treatment look like today? The surgical treatment, the, the medical treatment? Sure, sure. So anytime you have that diagnosis of colon cancer, you go through some tests, blood tests, CT scans, all to do what's called staging to see if this cancer has basically spread, um, or does it look contained? If it looks contained or early, then ultimately you go through resection. And that's where my job comes in. I do resection both by laparoscopic, which is little cuts and cameras, robotic, again, small cuts and cameras, or sometimes even a traditional open surgery. Everything to do to remove that cancer, the surrounding tissues and all the lymph nodes to see if there's any cancer in those lymph nodes, which may, may end up requiring chemotherapy in the future. A uh, viewer has a question about colonoscopy prep. Sure. Uh, this is from Mark. <laughs> I read about a colonoscopy prep that allowed some amount of solid food instead of clear liquids. Mm -hmm. um, any comment about that? Um, the idea of the whole thing is to get rid of the solid food. That's correct. I usually am okay with people having a very light breakfast before their bowel prep the day before. And then once they start the bowel prep, I really do prefer that people only drink clear liquids because you're not trying to make stool 
new stool. You want to clear everything out because ultimately if you have a poor bowel prep, we may not be able to see those little polyps and take them out. And so sometimes people with bad bowel prep tend to need colonoscopies a little sooner than the, the 10 years. All right, here's a viewer question about uh, what I believe is called a digital rectal exam that it, it does not involve, uh, it's, not, it's not like a digital clock digits, put it that way. Uh, Scott writes, my, my doctor doesn't perform a manual check of my colon when I have my annual physical. Um, she checks the PSA level only. Um, mm -hmm. So how often does, does that exam um, turn up something that would require a colon erectile surgery? Well, let's I mean, they're, see. They're, when, when a, a general doctor, an internist mm -hmm. does that, they're not looking for colon cancer. They're not, they're not. Um, in general, when they're doing a digital rectal exam, they're kind of usually checking for just the lower part of the rectum and the anus. So the colon itself is five, six feet long, and all you're seeing is sort of that lower last little bit uh, of the colon and rectum. So that can identify things like anal cancer or rectal cancer, but can't really see if there's any colon cancer in the way. The other thing is they can see if there's actually gross blood, and that would be a a sign for, to get a colonoscopy. A uh, phone call from Washington, D.C. This is mm -hmm. Andrea. Thank you for calling. Go ahead. Hi. I would please like to know, as a colon prep cleanser versus the traditional liquid solution, can you use Linzest along with Miralax as a colon cleanser prior to having a colonoscopy? Thank well, you for the phone call. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, so Linzest is a very special medication used for chronic constipation. Um, that is not, in general, a colon like prep um, medicine. Um, you can use Miralax, but it's basically like getting one big giant bottle of Miralax and splitting it between two 32-ounce, say, electrolyte or clear liquid, and then drinking that until everything is clear. That can be uh, just as, a, as effective as a prescription one. Which one do you prescribe? Um, well, I, I will either prescribe either Miralax, um, which is an over-the-counter, you don't need a prescription, or something called Suprep or Sutab. Um, okay. It's a smaller volume. Back one. in the day, they used to give you the Go Lightly, which is very effective, but it's about this much fluid Oof. to drink. <laughs> Let's do one more email sure. question. Uh, this uh, gentleman says, uh, this is Frank, at my last colonoscopy, I was told that after 80, I'm not a candidate. Why the 80 cutoff? Well, that's a great question. Um, so after 75 or so and on to 80, we start sort of tailoring um, who gets another colonoscopy, okay? So if you've had positive colonoscopies in the past or are at high risk, you may be a candidate for like another colonoscopy even at 80 or 80 plus. Um, We're gonna have to leave it there because Sorry. of time, but talk to your doctor about it. But right? talk to your doctor about Very it. Very good. Dr. Ivan Chua at St. Joseph Medical Center, University of Maryland. Doctor, we appreciate your time. Great, thank you.